Hello everyone, my name is Anton Pelcher. I'm an engineer and I've been building fish farms for more than 10 years. Today we're going to talk about Ras Farm Wastewater. We will see where it comes from, what is its volume and composition, what to do about wastewater treatment and how to dispose it from your fish farm. I have already started talking about it in my previous video. So, consider this video an addition to the first one and a more detailed disclosure of this information. Because many people asked me the question of what we actually did about wastewater discharge and treatment. This is one of my favorite topics because a lot of our customers didn't even think about this problem in advance until they faced it. Make sure you watch this video to the end because at the end I'm going to tell you about a very important tip. How to avoid any problem with wastewater discharge and to reduce its volume twice. Imagine that you have a fish farm with the capacity of 10 tons of sturgeon per year. The average fish holding tank volume is around 100 cubic meters. Given what I've mentioned before, RAS is not a totally closed system. That means that 10% of the total water volume inside the tanks will be discharged to the sewage system daily. 10% from 100 cubic meters makes 10 cubic meters per day. So what is 10 cubic meters of water? Is it much or little? Let's consider a country house for comparison. There is a certain amount of water consumption, which means that one person consumes on average 200 liters per day. I apologize for this comparison, but it means that 10 cubic meters of water is consumed by a house for 50 residents. Thus, your farm for 10 tons of sturgeon per year will produce as much wastewater as an apartment building for 50 people. Let's say 20 apartments, for example. This is not a small volume of wastewater. In rare cases, a simple filtration will suffice. So, if you don't have any wastewater treatment or water discharge system in place beforehand, you just run the risk of being flooded in the first few days of the farm operation. And now we will talk again about how much wastewater will be generated in total, depending on the type of fish. Based on the experience, there are some universal figures. In order to grow 1 kg of sturgeon, you need to supply 300 liters of makeup water. And if you are farming, let's say, 10 tons, that's 10,000 kg multiplied by 300 liters, which makes 3,000 cubic meters. And that's the annual consumption of makeup water as well as wastewater volume. For trout, this figure is higher. I have already mentioned that. It's about 400 liters for growing 1 kg of fish. And for catfish, it's lower. About 70 liters of water to grow 1 kg of fish. If you multiply this figure by the annual capacity of the farm, of course, taking into consideration the type of fish, you will get the annual flow rate, which you can then divide by 365 days and get the daily wastewater flow rate. And if something of what I have just said seems to you unclear, please write it in the comments to this video. And if you have any additional questions, write as well as I read all the comments and I'll surely answer you. So what does wastewater consist of? Although RAS is a completely organic system, the fish eats natural feed, the fishes don't contain any chemicals. Nevertheless, it contains pollutants that should not simply be discharged into the environment. There are certain ecological standards, and here are the parameters that may exceed these normal rates and create a conditional environmental hazard. The first parameter is suspended matter. Fish excretes feces, and thus suspended solids are formed. Suspended matter is dirt, feces, remains of an eaten feed. Of course, you cannot just discharge all that somewhere into an open water body. You first have to treat water of that. The next parameter is nitrogen. As a result of biofilter operation, nitrates are formed, and they are different for each type of fish. The concentration of nitrates can be from 50-100 mg per liter of wastewater and even up to 1000 mg per liter for fish species like the African catfish. The next parameter is phosphorus. Phosphorus is also a pollutant and is found in fish feces. Therefore, exceeding its concentration in the wastewater also results in fines for violating environmental regulations, at least in my country. Lastly, this is the so-called biological oxygen demand, or BOD. What is it? Imagine you have discharged one cubic meter of water which contains some organic substances. And this organic matter consumes oxygen from the water for its oxidation process. So, if you discharge wastewater into an open water body in order for it not to become deprived of oxygen, the requirement for these parameters is set, and you have to comply with that. And now let's summarize. 
we monitor the amount of four main pollutants. The first is suspended matter, the second is nitrogen, the third is phosphorus, and the fourth is biological oxygen demand. Be sure to count and monitor these parameters on a regular basis, because these four types of pollutants are contained in excessive concentrations in the water discharged from your ass. They have to be treated. Friends, we have figured out how much wastewater is generated in RAS, where it comes from, what pollutants it contains, and now it's important for us to understand what can be done with this wastewater. In other words, where should we discharge it and how should we treat it? Now let's move on to the autonomous sewage system. And we'll start by separating the issue of wastewater treatment and discharging this water into an open water body. Because these are two different issues that will most likely have to be dealt with separately. A local wastewater treatment plant. What is it? A special equipment unit which you bury into the soil, but within your site territory. This water treatment plant has all the necessary components for wastewater treatment. In other simple words, it's a septic tank, just more complex, more productive than the usual configuration which is commonly used for the country houses. So, wastewater gets into this local water treatment plant and is completely treated and purified up to the standard ranges that are needed. Its advantages are that it's compact. It works all year round, regardless of the temperature outside. These treatment facilities are insulated, the effluent is warm, everything works well, and such units are efficient and stable. The only downside is the high cost. Most likely, local surge treatment plant will cost two, three, four times more than a buy pond. So, I recommended you to consider this issue and think which of the options will be better in your particular case. And if you don't understand what is better to be located at your site, a buy pond, a local water treatment plant, or where and how it should be placed, you can always write your question in the comments, and I will surely provide you feedback. Well, we have discussed and resolved the issue of wastewater treatment, and we can presume that the water is already treated. Now we have to solve the issue of wastewater disposal. This is not an easy task either, because even treated water has to be discharged somewhere. Imagine 10 cubic meters of water daily. Of course, you can't just pour this amount of water onto your side, unless it's a potato field, of course. Well, even if it's a field, 10 cubic meters can be a problem, especially in winter because it will be absorbed rather poorly, and in summer, when the temperature is rather high, everything is fine. So, in winter, you can't always dump wastewater onto the open terrain. How could you solve this problem? And there are two solutions. I don't really recommend using the following one, but in general it's possible. You need to make a filtration field. That is, you provide for several wells around the perimeter of your site and connect them with a drainage pipe. By the way, the groundwater level should not be very high. If you put them in a swamp, this won't work at all. So, four more wells work as infiltrators. They soak up wastewater into the soil, and also by a communicating drainage pipe, which acts as an additional filtration unit, and it also connects the wells. Wastewater from one well can be overflown to another, and thus this system works. An extreme case, if nothing works, you will have to use a sewage drain cleaning machine. You call a sewage drain truck service and this truck pumps out the sludge. And you have to call it periodically, as your system will regularly fill up and will be overflowed. Speaking of just a sewage truck, there is another important nuance to note. It's the sludge handling. Because in any well, in any sewage treatment plant, you are going to have some kind of sludge in any case. I recommend you to put overflow wells, both in front of the local sewage treatment plant and in front of the bipods, which will collect cost suspended solids and sludge. This way, your sewage treatment plant can operate longer and without any failure, and the sludge, which will form in the overflow wells, has to be pumped out. Then, of course, a sewage truck comes to the rescue. You call for it, and it pumps out the sludge. This is option one. And the second option, which is more advanced, is sludge dewatering. What does it mean? You install specialized equipment. You pump liquid sludge into it and it dewaters that sludge by separating the water and the so-called sludge cake or prefit. This is the term used in municipal wastewater treatment. The nuances of this system are as follows. The benefits are, of course, undeniable. That is, it detaches the sludge. You don't have to dispose of it anywhere. And as far as the drawbacks are concerned, the first is that often our customers think that they are going to dewater the sludge easily and then use it as fertilizer. Sounds nice and optimistic, but how is it in practice? 
Let's get to the bottom of it. First, in order to do water sludge, you need quite expensive equipment, which can cost up to 20 or even 30 percent of the total cost of the farm. And the first question, is it really necessary if there is no economy at all? In reality, you won't be able to sell the sludge anywhere. The second nuance is the dewatering process. The fact is that this sludge is very difficult to suspend in mechanically, and in order to separate the sludge from the water, you need to use coagulants, and coagulants are different chemical compounds, and often after dewatering this sludge, it's saturated with chemicals. So not only have you spent a lot of money on the equipment, you've run a fairly complex process, and finally you've ended up with getting sludge that's not necessarily usable in organic fertilizers. And so, the question arises, is it all that necessary? I'll tell you the truth, 90% of the farms operate without sludge dewatering, precisely because it's a very complicated, expensive and unprofitable technology, at least as of today. Of course, if in your region there are crazy fines for dumping sludge, or if the services of the septic car cost as much as gold, the situation might be different. But now, that's the way it is, at least in my country. I always underline that. And now I'll tell you about the promised life hack. How to decrease the volume of makeup water and waste water twice. I've already told you that filters need to be flushed, nitrates have to be removed from the system. Very often, out of ignorance or just for convenience, farmers set up flushing a drum filter with clean tap water. That is, city main water is brought to the drum filter through a pipeline. Clean tap or main water is supplied to the nozzles, and it's also flushed down the drainage pipes. Everything seems convenient and cool, but what happens in reality? We have omitted the nitrates issue. The fact is that if we use clean tap water to flush the drum, it turns out that nitrates remain and accumulate in the system. And at some point, we will need to discharge the same volume of additional water from RAS in order to keep the nitrates level within the normal range. Otherwise, you will have clean water with the excessive level of nitrates. How is it possible to solve this problem? It's rather simple. Connect the drum filter flushing pump not to clean tap water, but to rest circuit. Sure, you will need to put in a special mechanical filter, so that the nozzles are not get clogged by the suspended matter. But it's definitely worth it. Because when you flush the drum filter with treated water from RAS, not only do you flush pollutants from the drum filter mesh, but you also flush nitrates out of your RAS. And by doing that, you can spend only one water volume instead of two. This will reduce the volume of makeup water that will be needed to supply to the system. Well, now for the fun part. I have prepared for you as a bonus, at the link below, a complete calculation of the effluent, its quantity, its concentrations, for each fish species, for each rest system. You just enter the farm capacity and you get a ready calculation of the amount and, most importantly, the concentration of wastewater. Thus, you can estimate in advance the amount of effluent, the volume of sewage, the equipment requirements for treatment, and also where you will need to dispose of wastewater, taking into account the volume of wastewater. In this video, I talked about wastewater, where it comes from, what is its quantity, what is its composition? What are the requirements to its treatment? How to treat it? And where to discharge? This was Anton Pelcher. Subscribe to my channel, a channel about how to grow fish and make good money from it.